So we've abandoned our quest for the meaning of life and why we're here for this? Greetings and welcome back to Here's What I Heard. I'm Laura Degatis, your hostess. Thank you for clicking on my little acre of the internet today. Sorry, this is a little late, but you all know what is happening in my personal life right now, and it hasn't been easy burying my little sister. My folks will never be the same, and this week is closures week, which means memorials and life celebrations. So please bear with us and bear with me. This has not been an easy time. Anyway, this week, as promised, my video is going to be a review on the most popular documentary ever. Matt Walsh's What is a Woman? Which up until a few years ago could be answered quite simply. There's even a simple definition in the dictionary about this question. After watching this movie, I want to know what happened to the ultimate question of what is the meaning of life or what is our purpose? Why is something that has been so concretely defined for so long all of a sudden an integral and ultimate meaning of life type of question now? I think that this film explains this somewhat. All you have to do is talk to any gender affirming professional, shall we call them. I noticed that most of them are either alt identifying or trans themselves. Now, I knew this 80s New Age philosophy was goofy and unrealistic, but I never thought it was going to be a mainstream basis on college educations with actual required classes to study these gender-affirming psychologies. Uh, this film also gives you a short history of where a lot of this ideology came from, originated, and the horrible people and their horrible ways in which they became celebrated and adapted into university studies and is now being introduced to children as young as birth. That is, if they allow them to be born to begin with. Matt Walsh essentially does what most documentarians do when they come up with a question that they want answered or any question in which they think can be made into a documentary. In his quest for answers, he contacts and interviews a plethora of experts on the subject. He talked to therapists, doctors, and educators on both sides of the argument of transgender ideology. I call it that because one thing we find out in this documentary is that there is literally no long-term research on the effects of some of the medical consequences that any of this so-called therapy will do to, especially, as Sidney Watson puts it, our pudding people. Now, I always thought that that was what we called old folks, but okay, don't get me distracted. These two folks just astounded me for two reasons. Their absolute lack of a grasp on reality and that anyone in their right minds, no matter what the sheepskins on the wall or how many, would walk in, look at one of these two, and actually take them seriously and want their help? They must charge a whole lot of bank for their services, as that is what a lot of the gullibles will base their quality service decisions upon. And this one... So, on your website, if you'll, if you'll bear with me, sure. quoting, you say, I use a combination of approaches in my therapeutic work, including anti-oppression, feminist, and narrative frameworks. I rely deeply on systems theory and understanding that individuals are products of and in dialogue with our surroundings, including our families, broader culture, workplaces, nature, and political climates. What uh, does that mean? Yeah. Did someone order a word salad sandwich? I wonder how much business this person gets from the TLDR crowd. You know, too long, didn't read? Personally, I would have read that description and went, yeah, no thanks. I don't want to be told gibberish nor be affirmed if I need therapy. Still hungry? How about another word salad sandwich for you? This one's bigger. Uh, I guess we should start with, we've got gender and sex, right? Yeah. 
What, what's the difference between the two? Is there a difference? I saw that in your questions and I thought, my goodness, this is what we spend an entire semester kind of thinking through. But what we tend to think about in the social sciences today is that sex refers to a set of biological characteristics and gender is a social construct or category. What I think is often misleading about that characterization is allowed to be sort of messy and complicated. But in that framing, when you split them up into these wholly discrete constructs, study scholars, and, and really more specifically people who study gender and sex, we're not talking about sexuality right now, in the kind um, of academic universe that I travel in is that we see how deeply gendered ideas um, cultural ideas about masculinity um, and femininity, maleness and femaleness, both in humans and in lots of other animals. So are gender and sex two different things, or? Well, I think that they, they both are and they aren't. You can't be both of something. It just never works out that way. I'd be, I'm comfortable saying that gender and sex are, are two different constructs, but they're deeply intertwined with each other. So this is an educator specializing in women's studies? Hmm, what's wrong with this picture? And the fact that after all that blather, he just couldn't stand to be questioned, which he couldn't really distinguish between sex and gender, even after all that word salad. If you keep probing, we're gonna stop the interview. You keep invoking the word truth, which is condescending and rude, and you're walking on 30 seconds more of the nights before I get up. And the fact that they all seem to come back with the response of, well, I don't understand why you even ask. I just explained everything to you. How dare you want to know more than what I'm willing to say or do? How dare you not take my words as rote? And then storm out like some toddler that was told no while reaching for a hot stove or a sharp object. You know what? I think this interview is over. Yeah. I think, yeah. We're gonna I think, I think this interview I is said, over. I just had one last question. Uh, well, I, 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 what, the interview what, is over. Please he wants to know what, what is a woman. Please stop off the camera. Excuse me. So we're going to end the interview. If you guys could please pack up and return the office exactly. I just wanted to know. Okay, I came all this way to know what. Thank you. Are fair? I just wanted to know what is a woman. And you're not going to find out. Throughout this film, we eventually figure out that most of this wave of minority grievances means... Yup, you guessed it, money. We find out that these surgeries and therapies come to the tune of over $1.3 million per person, with one surgery alone being upwards of $70,000. Not to mention another lifetime subscriber to Big Pharma and the remedies and treatments necessary to keep up with these experimental procedures. You literally have to be wealthy to keep up with this lifestyle. Can you tell me about the procedures that you, you had? I've had seven surgeries. I've had one stress heart attack. I've had a helicopter life ride uh, with a pulmonary embolism. I've had uh, 17 rounds of antibiotics. I had six inches of hair on the inside of my urethra for 17 months. Nobody would help me, including the doctor that did this to me because I lost my insurance. I get infections every three to four months. I'm probably not going to live very long. Was there any real discussion of the risks and the side effects? And No. No, there's not. For the first time in history, a marginalized group has a huge dollar sign on the top of their head. We have five children's hospitals in the United States promoting that. And what? That's a phalloplasty. That's a bottom surgery. We have five children's hospitals in the United States telling girls that they can be boys at $70,000 a pop in a surgery that has a 67% complication rate. That will kill me from infection that I can't sue on. We're butchering a generation of children because nobody's willing to talk about anything. I actually feel horrible for these folks because they're convinced that these things will help them. And then when they run out of money, they just leave them off even worse off. Sometimes in the middle of 
transition sometimes afterwards when they need the help the most. This poor soul basically said that they were able to convince them to do this to themselves at 41 years old and then asked the question, what chance do our children have against this? Most people don't understand that children are literally sponges and they don't really know anything until they're taught. Why do you think that they are trying to target them so hard? Even without all of the long-term studies that they say that they have none of, which I believe, the only thing they seem to have proven beyond the shadow of a doubt is the self-harm and self-ending scenarios that happen to over 40% of these poor folks anywhere from one to seven years after their affirming surgeries. That is, if they can finish them. That is so, so sad when folks like this can actually be helped, but helping them won't make these butchers any money. There were two folks portrayed that were or seemed happy with their transition, but also very adamant that it was indeed not for children to even be introduced to something, much less taking any action on it. They were also very aware of their own gender dysphoria and they were distressed that it's being turned into an irreversible fad. Mainly because it diminishes the people that actually need help for this problem, but also because it seems to be butchering otherwise healthy youngsters for nothing but the dollars it will produce for the so-called professionals. So if you were to ask me to describe this documentary in three words, I would say this movie was disturbing, informative, and witty in that order. So please protect your youngsters from this kind of debauchery and don't let them tell you the only options are do you want a live person or a dead person based on their gender. Get to a realistic therapist as fast as you can if you hear that line. Oh, and I recommend you see this movie a few times as it will take a while for some of this stuff to register. I know it took me a few rewinds because of my did I hear what I just thought I heard reactions. So medical affirmation begins when the patient says they're ready for it. Puberty blockers, which are completely reversible and don't have permanent effects, are wonderful because we can put that pause on puberty it's like if you were listening to music, you put the pause on. So you called your daughter a she, and you you went to jail for that? It's considered criminal violence to uh, not use the preferred pronouns. It is no different than, let's say, I were to take a broomstick and whack one of my kids over the head. If your sperm don't make you male. Does a chicken have gender identity? Does a chicken cry? Well, Does chi a chicken commit suicide? Let's frame it, because you're talking, you're trying yeah, to... A chicken has sex, like any, like any biological organism. A chicken has organism. an assigned gender, but a chicken doesn't have a gender identity. So we assign female to chickens when they lay eggs? That's a, we that's... assume they're female if they lay eggs. Is that indicative of some kind of unfair advantage that those individuals might have against the girls? No, it's not indicative of an unfair advantage. And I think part of the proof of this is that more transgender girls are coming out in high school and still playing sports, and they're not winning. You know, the Connecticut case is the exception. How do you know that you're a man? How do I know that I'm a man? I guess because I got a dick. Just to end this off cleanly, I'm going to reiterate my question from the beginning of this video, which is, we abandon our quest for the meaning of life and why we exist for this? I do hope you enjoyed my video today. If you'd like to support my work, please give us a like, a subscribe, a comment, and a share would be awesome. Also, a donation would be the ultimate. All my links are below. Click on some of them, will ya? Also, don't forget, every Thursday night at 7 p.m. Central Time, the Talk To Me America Live call-in talk show with yours truly, Lord Goddess, where the world wants to know what you have to say. So call me and tell them like it is. Thank you for clicking on my little acre of the internet today. Until next time, AMF.